All right. So we're ready for uh, this is factoring video C, as in coyote, and we're talking about factoring trinomials. And uh, if we're just brushing up and reviewing, this is not the shortcut way. Uh, these are ones that are the long way. But just suck. I gotta, I gotta get some juice. Here we go. We're still factoring. We're trying to break this down into two things that are multiplied. Notice it's a trinomial. It has three terms. And I also want you to notice that this is there's a four out in front here. If there were no number in front here, we'd be able to do a shortcut way in. Um, that's, that's a different video. But let's just focus in on factoring this guy. So first step is to see if there's a greatest common factor here. They all don't have x's, so I can't do that. And then there's no number that goes into all of them. So there's no greatest common factor. So one method of um, factoring trinomials is called the product sum method, where basically you kind of draw an x here, and you try to think of numbers that will add up to 13. Since 13 is the B value, I put it in the bottom. And then I'm trying to think of numbers that will multiply up to 4 times negative 12, which is negative 48. I got that number up top here by multiplying the first number times the last number. So then I'm trying to think of two numbers that multiply to 48 and add up to 13. Um, if you get stuck, I start kind of just listing them in my head, and I start at 1. 1 and 48? Mm, no. 2 and 24? No. 3 and 16. I think that's going to be it. 3 and 16 are going to be my two numbers. i got to decide which one's going to be positive, which one's going to be negative. It needs to add up to 13, so I'll make the 3 negative. Once I have my two numbers, I'm going to rewrite this problem here, but I'm going to rewrite it using my two new numbers in a special way. So, remember in factoring, I'm not technically changing anything. I'm just kind of changing forms. So this is kind of how I change forms for this one. So if you notice, these two lines are the same thing. The only thing I changed was that I made 13x into negative 3x plus 16x. So the same thing. I still have the minus 12 just like the top line also. But what happened was I turned it into a problem where instead of three terms where I wasn't for sure what to do, I turned it into a problem where there's four terms and I do know how to do this type. If not, see. Uh, video B on grouping. It's probably hitting Twitter as we speak. But with four terms, you draw a line down the middle and you group the left side and the right side and treat it as separate problems. So here, greatest common factor. Now there's no numbers, so I just take out an X. I think about, okay, if I took out an X, what would be left? got one of the x's, so there'd still be 4x left. I took out an x, so all that would be left is the minus 3. Over here, I'm seeing, well, it's going to be a plus because my third term is plus. Greatest common factor is 4. And then the biggest num number that will go here should be 4x minus 3 also. I'm doing it right. I should get bubbles that match. So that is my answer. Put my common parenthesis, factor that out, 
and then what's left is my second parenthesis x plus 4. This is factored broken down form. If I were a nerd and wanted to check my answer, I can do, let's see, 4x squared, yep, 16x, yep, minus 3x, mm, yep, and negative 12, mm, yep. So this is the, these two things are the exact same thing. This is just the factored form. And I use the product sum method to do that.